Welcome back to another video, everybody. And today I will, from today on, I will continue all of my videos in English. Before I go on, I would just like to introduce myself once again. My name is Barbara John Bakhtiarov. I am the youngest niner in Uzbekistan. I also have a SAT 1600. I stayed at Johns Hopkins University and I am a third year student majoring in political science and psychology. Now, now that we have that out of the way, I would just like to recap on what we did in our last two videos. On our last two videos, we went over the general application process to enter American universities. That included like general requirements like IELTS, SAT, extracurricular activities, differences between public university and private universities, Ivy Leagues, and everything of that sort. And today we're gonna shift from that into more specific side of the application. Namely, we're gonna start off with the academic. So this entire video will focus on the academic side. Now, what is an academics? Academics is things like uh, your GPA, the courses you take in high school, your stats in terms of SAT, ACT, um, and all of those things. Those are all considered your academic side of your application to these top universities. Why am I starting off with this? Because this is the fundamental. This is one of the most important things that gets the admissions officers to look at your application. Now, let's start off with just the importance of uh, GPA overall on your admissions because we're going to be talking about other things, but let's start off with GPA. So for example, let's say you go to a public school in Uzbekistan, right? And you have kept up a five out of five GPA for all 11 years of your school, right? Of course, we're talking about high school, but you have five all throughout. An admissions officer goes, okay, whatever curriculum the student had, he did his best to achieve the fullest marks. Whatever classes he took, he was best at all of the classes he took. So within the given environment that he already had academically, he took all the challenges and he was able to basically take all the classes he can, right? And it just shows that you were basically marking really well. Compared to a student, let's say, who had a three out of five GPA. Now that is bad, why? Because it shows that you were not consistent maybe, you were late to class maybe, you didn't do your homework, did really bad on exams. And this is what basically what uh, colleges are. The half of college is just midterms and finals and midterms and finals. And if you couldn't handle it in your own school, then what makes you think you can handle these academics at a top university? Now that's the main reason top universities take GPA into account, right? But what actually is the role of GPA, right? Like, well, what, are, what does it show? So if I give a five out of five, does that mean uh, I, I'm a guaranteed an admission to a university? No, it's not what it means, okay? Having a high GPA just gets you into the door. Now, what does that mean? If, you, if, if you're applying to, let's say, Princeton, Yale, Harvard, Johns Hopkins, any one of these universities, right? And let's say your GPA scale is out of five. And let's say you have something like a 2.8 or a three. An admissions officer goes, whoa, that is the biggest red flag. So should I even continue looking at this student's application? Are they academically capable of basically doing well at our university, right? Of course, they might look a little bit more further into your application, but that initial negative really red flag puts your application at a big disadvantage compared to everybody else. For that reason, the GPA is very important in terms of admissions, okay? Now, all right, let's say we have established the importance of GPA, what's next? The next thing is your standardized exams. Especially now, a lot of the top universities have gone from test uh, optional to test mandatory. So some of the schools that went test mandatory this year are big universities like Harvard, Dartmouth. They all, they're, they're all one by one going test mandatory. And why do they do this? First of all, GPA systems differ from country to country, school to school, from private school to regular school, all over the world admissions officers cannot compare you properly with other applicants that are applying to these universities. Let me give you a simple example. Let's say there's a student uh, coming from a public school in Uzbekistan and a presidential school in Uzbekistan versus a, let's say another student from South Korea, let's say another student from Canada, China, United States. Now, all of these students have been through different education systems, different GPA system, different classes. So what makes me believe that one student's 4.5 out of 5 is not the same as another student's 5 out of 5, right? For those reasons, we have the standardized exams. Those are the exams that every single individual has to take, and those, school, those basically is a good metric to compare students given the same exact questions and same exact testing metric, basically. And that's the reason we have SATs in the first place. And what does SAT show, you might ask, right? Okay, I have a 1550 SAT. Does that make me the smartest person alive? Hell no, okay? 
Like you having a high SAT does not make you smarter than others. What does it show though? It shows you are disciplined. It shows that you have the ability to sit down and basically study for a given exam for two to three months to achieve a full point. So when you're eventually at a top university or any university for that matter, you are able to perform well at that university. SAT and ACT are pretty much the same exact thing. They're both testing you on things like uh, math, English, a little bit of scientific passages in both of them, right? That's what they're basically telling you. They're saying, okay, do you have these very fundamental English and math knowledge for you to do well at our university? And basically what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you can get them. Now, now that I gave you an overview and basically the importance of these two things, I want to just compare them a little bit, okay? Uh, SAT versus GPA. Some people say, well, if I have a really high GPA and I have a really low SAT, can, that, can one account for the other or the other way around, right? Simple answer is yes, sometimes it can. It differs from case to case. Let's say you have a 1600 SAT and you also have a 4.2 out of a five GPA scale. Yeah, sure, your GPA might be a little lower, but showing that SAT can put you in a better position than you were originally. Same thing goes otherwise. If you have a really high GPA, but your SAT might be a little lower, one can compensate for the other. However, remember you're applying to some of the most prestigious universities in the world, meaning that there are students who have both. So if you can have both, then I suggest you guys to have both of them. Now, although our focus is on applying to top universities, I just want to talk about the importance of IELTS a little bit and then move on. Now, let's talk about IELTS. IELTS is a standardized exam, it's academic, and what does it show? First of all, IELTS is only for students, international students. They're not for domestic students. The reason we have the IELTS test is to show that, hey, do you have the academic ability to come to our university and basically perform? What does that mean? Let's say you have 5.5 in IELTS. It means you're a okay English user. You can understand everything. You might not be well at writing or speaking, but you can at least conceptualize ideas and things in English. So a university like, let's say, Princeton, who's really, really into research and basically civic engagement and they really love academics, they might go like, well, if this student comes to our university, will they be able to go through our campus? Can they talk with other students? Can they listen to these high level professors who are talking really fast in like a auditorium of 500 people. So the thing is, you might want to have a higher IELTS because it shows your ability to speak in English. It shows your English proficiency. It doesn't really affect your acceptance, however. As long as you meet the base requirement, as long as you have what they're asking you, it will not matter too much in terms of admissions, okay? So I want everybody to understand that you having an IELTS 9 will not give you an advantage. If the requirement is a 7.5 and you have a 7.5, you have ticked off their uh, checkbox. Maybe if an admissions officer finds that you have nine as a sign or no, something like, I guess it's just like, they're like, whoa, cool. That's only the reaction you're gonna get because the whole application is holistic, right? Now, now that we have covered the entire importances of these things, how many percentage of the application does this usually cover? Well, first of all, I'll give you a number, but don't take my word for it. There's no real like specific uh, numbers that say, well, your GPA and your stats are this much percent of your application. What it is is approximately 30%. Your approximately 30% of your application is your scores, your classes you took, your GPA, your stats. Maybe you took some AP classes. Maybe you took some A-levels, which is gonna be my next point. I'm getting there, I'm getting there, everybody. But for the standardized exams that the university look at, SAT slash ACT or your, I, uh, or, I mean your IELTS and your GPA. Have those things and you're ready to apply. Now, I know recently there's a big thing about AP versus A-levels versus IB. I mean, um, recently a lot of the licenses in Uzbekistan started offering uh, A-levels. I know some private schools started offering IB. Uh, some started offering AP. I mean, everybody's like, whoa, all these opportunities, what do I do? Do I take it? The short answer is 
yes, you should take all of these opportunities you can. Why? Because Uzbekistan is becoming really, really competitive in admissions. About five to six years ago, when somebody had a 1500 SAT, we would go, whoa, that's nuts, a 1500 SAT? Now it's like, whoa, like one out of every like 10 students in Uzbekistan uh, who are applying to top universities have 1500 plus SAT, right? And it's not as impressive as it used to be once before. What does that mean? That means Uzbekistan is now competing with all the other countries in the world in terms of admissions, right? We are that competitive. We are that good now. For that reason, we are offering all these new things. So year by year, students in Uzbekistan will become more and co more competitive. And now students ask me, if I go to a public school and I don't have the opportunity to take AP exams uh, or, or A-levels, they, they cost money and I can't, should I really go and take them? My advice for you, maximize your SAT score, maximize your GPA, continue with the extracurricular activities that we will mention in our next classes, but overall, you don't need to. However, if you are able to, and you are now at ninth grade and 10th grade, and you kind of are like, hey, I'm done with SAT, I have a good GPA, I already speak English very well, and I want another academic challenge. And of course, that will help you with your university because a university, when they look at your application and that you see, they see that you have A-levels, APs, they go, whoa, this student is pretty good. I mean, they, they, they can academically come and handle our coursework. Why? Because AP, A-level, IB are college-level, college-credited courses. What does that mean? For example, I took 12 AP classes back in high school. I got a five in, for example, AP Calculus BC. When I came to Johns Hopkins University, I was given eight credits for AP Calculus BC. So I, had to, I could skip Calc 1 and 2 and not take it in college. And with 120 credits, you can get your bachelor's degree. So guess what happened? I came into college with over 30 credits. So I was like already a sophomore standing coming in as a freshman, which, which is why I am actually graduating early very soon because APs, IB, A-level, they're not just something that helps you with admission. They give you college credits. They save time and money for you in the future. So if you can make the investment and you, you have the discipline to study for them, go for it. No one will stop you it will make a positive effect and impact on your overall application. Now, I just wanna kind of conclude this lesson with some advices I have for all the future test takers in SAT and IELTS, as somebody who has perfect score on both. First of all, let's start with IELTS. A lot of people ask me, well, oh, well what's the importance of IELTS? How, how much should I study for IELTS? This, the thing is, nobody has the same timeline. Everybody has different timelines. Everybody has a different uh, way of basically measuring their, um, like basically their plan. Some people have family responsibilities. Some people can devote three months of summer completely. My, level, my recommendation for you guys is, once you hit B2, and please do not rush. Make sure you have a good grasp of general English, and once you do, then go to an IELTS course for two months, three months, or self-study if you have to, and get your 7, 7.5 and just move on. I see a lot of times students getting a 7.5 and say, it's not enough, I need to go for 8.5, I need to go for 9. Guys, don't do that. There's no point of it. Get what you need in terms of IELTS and move on. You getting half a mark higher is not gonna give you some, uh, I don't know, some like dusty fairy points for you to get into top university. SAT. With the SAT, it's a bit more complex. With the math section, hey, I'm, I'm gonna admit this, but Uzbekistan national exams, the DTM, uh, those exams are probably much harder. The math section is much harder than the SAT math. So a lot of the students in Uzbekistan have great math knowledge already and they really don't need help with math. So I wanna give some uh, recommendation for English. The reason a lot of Uzbekistan students have problems with the SAT English section is because you study all of your subjects in Uzbek. As somebody who grew up in America, I had problem with the grammar section, not the English section. Why? Because the English section tests your ability to read and interpret scientific passages, historical passages, and basically all these social sciences uh, articles that you really never read when you were preparing for even your IELTS, okay? So for those reasons, try to read daily scientific articles, daily articles about like politics. Just make sure that you have a concept and like this conceptualization of different ideas and different subject areas and you can basically interpret them and visualize them in English. 
If you can do that, you can do well on your SATs. Okay. With that being said, that is ev uh, everything for today. Uh, I hope you guys learned at least something about academics, IELTS, uh, SAT, and all this big jumble. As we go on further and further, we will discover more new things about the admissions process. Make sure to drop a like on this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, and turn your notifications on because you don't want to miss another video. We have the regular decision and the early decision crawling up in just a few weeks, I would even say. With that, with, that, with that being said, good luck everybody. I'll see you all in the next video. Enjoy your day.